Was the blacklist something that affected your environment particularly oh, sure. strongly? Because uh, some of my friends were not uh, employable. And CBS, now the blacklist was were not operable anymore. But Reggie and Zero Mostel were friends, and I was a friend of Zero's, and they wanted Zero to play the part. And he had been blacklisted? Yes. No, you can't use him. So Jack Klugman mm -hmm. was hired. Uh, did you uh, uh, overcome the objections in some cases of the network to using actors who had been blacklisted or writers or directors? Or We tried, but uh, they were very strict about that. There was always be someone over there going down the list, uh oh, he belonged to the Boy Scouts for the Soviet Union or something like that, you know. D and did you ever smuggle in writer's scripts under other names? I didn't, but it was done and I was aware of it. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a show it was sponsored by Borden, that good milk company. <clears throat> and I had been in the Crucible, Arthur Miller. Oh, suspect writer there. And uh, the people at the network, whoever it was, you know, the casting people, who were friends of mine, uh, they submitted uh, my name. And they knew that Mr. Borden was very special concerned about getting people in who were suspect. And so what the network did was they pulled the script. And they didn't submit it. They didn't do it. Mm -hmm. And then I went out to Ann Arbor and uh, I did a, a, the crucible there uh, for a week or so. And, uh, and I came back and then they submitted the script again. And Mr. Borden said, look, once is all right, but he was in it twice. Don't hire him. Did you ever get challenged? Were you forced to sign documents uh, saying that you had not There been was a loyalty there? oath that was circulated around. And I wrote on it, I do not know these organizations to be subversive. I don't recognize these organizations. It's the Attorney General's and the network's idea. And I don't want to be uh, subject to a libel suit or a defamation suit. So uh, I will not sign it. Mm -hmm. Well. They called me up, and I said, no, I won't sign it. So they just buried it. Did you consider, that had to be uh, uh, unusual for those times, for you to get away with Well, they, they knew that I was pretty much a good American, but I thought this whole idea about the blacklisting, because some of them were friends of mine that I'd known before, good actors, and uh, it was just stupid, and the networks are so cowardly that they uh, gave in to them. Mm -hmm. And finally, well, here's a sad, sad story. Benton Hayworth, who was president of, of AFTRA, that was a friend of mine, and I had worked with him. He was a very blacklisty guy. He was one of the top ones. And uh, I went to a meeting, because I thought, what is going on here in this union? And then he got off the chair this came was a, a meeting of Af at AFTRA? A, a regular meeting. And he came back to me and I said, hi, Benny. And he, he went on and I saw what was happening. I said, so I never went back. Years later, I saw Benny Hayworth out in Los Angeles. And he, I think he was with a son of his. And uh, he was selling storage batteries for automobiles. And he said, they won't hire me. And I just shrugged, you know, like, well, Live by the sword, you die by the sword. Mm -hmm. But got him in the end. Were there other friends of yours whose pers close personal friends whose lives were really severely damaged? By severely it? damaged. Severely damaged. Because they could, they could work in the theater, <clears throat> and uh, summer stock, and uh, in Canada, <laughs> in England, like uh, Sam Wanamaker was blacklisted. He went to London and he made a career for himself, mm -hmm. a very important career. Uh, 